Typhoon Canoon expected to stall with updates on Tropical Storm Dora on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for August 2nd. So, uh, an active tropics now across the Northern Hemisphere. We have Typhoon Canoon, which has weakened a little bit, but still a strong typhoon and looking good. And Tropical Storm Dora, which has entered the scene in the Eastern Pacific, a compact system, but could be intensifying quite significantly at the moment. 34 storms so far this year, day 63 of Atlantic hurricane season, and those last two invests have clearly turned out to be duds because we've scrubbed them from any chances of development at this point. NHC will probably follow suit eventually, but they'll be bringing their chances down much more slowly. I still don't know what happened, model support just collapsed and there you go, it had gone. Day 80 of hurricane season in the eastern Pacific and chances have risen for that area of interest in the far eastern part there behind Dora. 50% chance now and could be a threat to the coast of Mexico. Dora moving out to sea but could strengthen quite a lot in the next few days. Canoon there passed by the southern tip of Okinawa over the course of the last 12 hours and moving slowly into the East China Sea. A 20% area of interest will sprout out from its bands to the east and could end up developing. Tropical Depression 4B made landfall in Bangladesh uh, some hours ago and has now moved inland. It will die off but it will still cause lots of rainfall inland and possibly across the wider area there with some substantial rainfall amounts. So looking at satellite imagery from the last 24 hours and you'll see the hallmarks of two tropical cyclones. Uh, you'll clearly see uh, 4B's influence, a uh, very large monsoonal system and of course uh, Typhoon Canoon there as it moves just south of Okinawa. Some impressive rain rates. Well here it is, um, Canoon, moving very close to those islands of Okinawa, just off to the west there, those smaller islands as well. And it will continue moving west-northwestwards as it currently is, very slowly right now, and that will probably lead to a gradual weakening trend. At the moment it's probably still a mid to high end category 3. We expect that weakening will uh, gradually occur though over the course of the next few days. And the real question is to be honest how much will it stall? Uh, models are suggesting that maybe it will move around a little bit more than first thought and that could keep the storm's intensity up. But right now really fascinating to watch just with how slowly it's moving on that radar imagery. Well, here's Dora looking pretty good, a very small system, uh, but it's got a core there developing quite nicely and blowing up decent amounts of convection, leading lots of people to wonder whether there is an eye wall feature building itself up underneath all of that, and I wouldn't be surprised if that is the case. There's a quick look at that uh, Bay of Bengal tropical depression now, uh, really lacking on satellite at this point, and you can just about trace the circulation there as it moves inland, now into West Bengal, India. Uh, as it continues that movement west-northwest. So sea surface temperatures right now, the eastern Pacific looking good over a wide area along the coast of Mexico. Where Dora is right now is about 30 degrees Celsius, will gradually fall as it moves towards the west. In the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico is piping hot, well above 30 degrees, all around the Florida Peninsula as well, and up the uh, Gulf Stream. Uh, extending out into the open waters of the Atlantic, beyond the Bahamas as well, some really decent temperatures, uh, some concerns there for the later season. Uh, there's going to be a lot of energy out there in the Atlantic. West Pacific, you can see one or two cool trails formed by the recent typhoons. The hot spots now are just off the northern Mariana Islands, just over 30 degrees, and in the western South China Sea in the Gulf of Tonkin. But in general, temperatures are still good across most of the western Pacific, and they'll recover quite well too. The Bay of Bengal, uh, still warm temperatures there as well, although they've dropped just a degree or two uh, underneath that tropical cyclone, around 29 degrees Celsius in the Bay of Bengal. Southwest Indian Ocean, still pretty cool now in the off-season, of course. Only a few spots up to scratch there. 
and a similar story in the Australian region, most of the Australian coast under 26 degrees and most of Fiji now also just slipping beneath that 26 degree threshold. Compared to average, there's a cool spot now in the Western Pacific because of the recent storms. The Eastern Pacific, that blue area, it seems to be moving westwards and getting smaller. The eastern part of the East Pacific now looking above average for a large part of the ocean there, uh, particularly near the ba Baja California Sur. The Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico has averaged out a little bit further now, it's about 2 degrees above still and the main development region is the area that we're really looking at there, very warm, 3 degrees above average. Oceanic heat content looking very good in the Caribbean Sea, mainly further west into the uh, uh, Gulf of Mexico, around the Bahamas as well, very good values. Eastern Pacific off the coast of Mexico, good values for a large chunk there. Even a few spots off Japan now showing up with some energy there. And the Japanese Ryukyu Islands also looking favorable. And it's the Philippine Sea still that's got the bulk of that energy there. Models for the next five days. Some of you are saying, why don't we look at the Atlantic anymore? Well, there's nothing happening there on the GFS model at least. So here's the Eastern Pacific, Dora moving westwards there, a compact system all the way, and that second system forming as well, becoming a mature hurricane within the five day period, which is interesting to see. Now with a small storm like Dora, GFS may be uh, underdoing the intensity there. Uh, we're certainly expecting at least a category two out of Dora and maybe stronger. That next system though, GFS pretty fond of, at least getting a category three. Here's Canoon and you can see how large it is, very large compared to those other two storms we were looking at and watch its motion closely so it's westwards then it hooks round towards the east again and actually slips in between near Okinawa again and moves back out over the proper ocean pretty much the way it came in almost so that's in, an interesting development there from the GFS model it's been uh, uh, towed a little bit further towards the east other models have it even further east like the ECMWF which calls for it to move further along the coast of Japan I also want to point out that second system that started to appear as well a very broad one but wrapped up into a typhoon near the east coast of Japan now a lot going on look at the rainfall pattern here extraordinary amounts of rainfall possible due to the storm's stalling motion and this is what we expect over the next seven days so over in Taiwan on the mountains, over 300 millimeters of rain there. For some of the Ryukyu Islands, we're getting up to 41 inches of further rainfall on Okinawa in the next seven days and 45 inches a little bit further uh, to the west there, one of the minor islands to the west and maximums there are 57 inches depicted on that graphic. So just to put that in millimeters, 40 inches is 1,000 millimeters, 44 inches is 1,100 and 57 inches is nearly 1,500 millimeters. Extraordinary. Medium range, day 5 to 10, you can take a look at these two storms. So Dora continuing there, weakening now south of Hawaii, but it does keep on churning. And that second storm uh, ends up dying out, capitulating quite quickly in the end uh, towards the northwest. It ends, it ends up gaining too much latitude. And of course, the elements aren't very favorable up there for tropical cyclones. So both of them are very much on their last legs by the time we get to the end of that 10 day period and maybe another weak system forming there as well. Here's Canoon day 5 to 10, that second system making landfall not far from Tokyo by the way, so that could still be something to watch out for as well. And there it is, this enormous typhoon uh, swirling off towards the west eventually and making landfall just south of Shanghai. It keeps moving throughout that whole period, so the GFS actually calls for the storm to be stronger uh, and remain at least a category 2 by the time it makes that final landfall. Also looking out for another storm near the end of that 10 day period there and maybe a third one, uh, so an extremely busy time possibly. Scan the barcode and take a look at the Force of the Team merch store where we have all of our usual items but despite all of this activity, still no sign of Hone, which we're still waiting for and you can wear the t-shirt to prove it. In the silly range then, we're looking towards the Central Pacific. Will there be any signs of excitement? Well, there is that little system there that's moving along towards the Central Pacific. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I don't know, uh, but a weak surface low there that ends up continuing westwards. And you know what? That actually, I think, could be a Hone. Uh, but 
that it could develop before it reaches 140 degrees west or it may not develop at all. It's very long range, I don't want to excite you too much. The remnants of Dora continue westwards there, you can just about make it out entering the western Pacific but there's really nothing left of it, uh, so not much to talk about. In the Western Pacific, it's just a mess and a slurry of all kinds of different systems here. And there's one, two, three disturbances with center of circulations. Uh, that one there to the south becomes more potent, moves through the Mariana Islands, not far from Guam there, just north of it, and becomes a small uh, typhoon. Really interesting to see what happens with all of that. A massive mess there in the wake of Canoon's Rampage, which in itself looks like it's going to take a very erratic track. Uh, if you really are wondering though about where Canoon will track, it really is a wait and see. Keep up to date with our updates. You can talk about all of this in our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with members from all around the world. Good times. Not so good times. Back in 1922, 101 years ago now, we had what was known as the Swato Typhoon, which leveled uh, major parts of the city of Swato, now known as Shantou, uh, in southeastern China. A Category 4 landfall, we think, uh, on this date in 1922, it killed around 100,000, the deadliest storm in the Western Pacific since 1886. Extremely destructive and deadly, and one that will be remembered for an extremely long time, as we can attest. Back to today, we are still Code Red for Canoon, a beast of a completely different variety. The next name in the Atlantic is Emily Still. In the Eastern Pacific now, it's Eugene. And in the Central Pacific, we're still, of course, waiting for Pone. 34 name storms so far this year, which means that we're starting to get up that ladder towards the annual average of 92. Lan is next in the Western Pacific, in the North Indian Ocean. That system didn't get named. So the next name will still be Tej, but that Storm 4B did count towards our tally. In the Australian region, the next name is Jasper. Southwest Indian Ocean will start off with Alvaro. And in the South Pacific, our next name is Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.